Good afternoon. Thank you so much for being with us. This is Intersections, and we are back live in person. Again, Intersections is a project of Interfaith Alliance of Iowa, and really is about civil dialogue on a whole host of issues that we, that we tackle. Um, so I'm really glad that you are with us, whether you're in person or it, whether you are live. Um, and I don't know if I'm in the camera range for the live. Okay, awesome. Um, and for those who are um, live, thank you for your patience and waiting for us. We were having some Wi-Fi trouble so, um, and getting connected. So thank you for your patience and waiting for us. Um, on the ballot this November, November 8th, is um, a constitutional amendment. And so we have a panel of guests who have been working in coalition with a whole host of organizations. And I'm not gonna get into too much details because that's what they're going to talk about. Um, but I am delighted to have with us Mike Wyrick, who is um, with Amnesty International, the Iowa chapter, Christine Lehman Ingledow, who is with Moms Demand Action, the Cedar Rapids chapter, and Janet Carl, who is on the board of Iowans for Gun Safety. And I, as I said, they are but three of over 30 organizations that are part of Iowans um, for Responsible Gun Laws, a coalition that they will talk about and the work that they were talking about. But thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for being with us in person um, and online. Um, our next intersection, uh, Intersections is always the first Friday of the month, except for this month, it's the second Friday of the month because of the holiday. Um, but we will be back to the first Friday of the month and, and we will be back at First Presbyterian Church, which is where we normally um, are housed. And so we're thankful to to Groundswell Cafe for housing us today because of a um, conflict with the schedule of the church. So um, on your tables, um, there is a flyer about the work of the coalition as well as the intersections. There's a postcard about the intersections lineup for the year minus the last two we're still working on. So feel free to take those with um, for the postcard. Uh, please take um, one and put it on your refrigerator and take a second and give it to a friend and invite them to come to intersections and all of the great lineup of speakers that we have for the year. So please do that. And now I'm going to turn it over to Janet Carl. Thank you. Thank you, Connie. Hello. Very nice to be with you today. Um, as Connie said, I'm associated with Iowans for Gun Safety, and I have an opportunity a little bit later on. I'll talk about that uh, wonderful organization. But I want to talk to you first about this coalition that has formed um, called Iowans for Responsible Gun Laws. Uh, now, the first it, things may have been going uh, earlier than this, but the first I, I checked this yesterday. And the first email I got from Connie was on last, a year ago, October 5th, uh, in inviting me to a, a this sort of organizational uh, group that was getting together. Uh, and at that point, they had already chosen this name, Iowans for Responsible Gun Laws. And uh, several organizations had already committed, and they were beginning to file the papers that were necessary to become a political action committee in the state. And of course, this is a, this is not a partisan issue, you know, this is not a, like a state legislative race or something like this. This is a ballot issue. So it's, it's not related to a political party, but it is, of course, vitally important to people of, well, everyone in the state, it's vitally important to. So I just want to mention some of the names and some of the organizations uh, on that first email that I received from Connie, from Rita Carter with the Methodist Church and Iowans for Gun Safety, Art Roche, and, uh, Wendy Abramson, also Iowans for Gun Safety, Matt Sinovic with Progress Iowa, Tom Chapman, Brian Carter, Laura Hesburgh, maybe you two, who knows? There were a lot of people uh, on that first uh, uh, and as I say, they were already organized by the time I got involved. Um, and at that point, Connie asked me to be the treasurer of the pack. I had said I would do anything, that this was my issue for this year. This, in my view, is the most important, the single most important vote we will cast this year in Iowa. 
That's, that's my view. And so I had said to them, I will do anything to help on this issue. And so she says, will you be treasurer? <laughs> OK, I said, but you know, I need somebody. I need help. And uh, as it's turned out, Connie has provided a great deal of that help, as well as other members of the group. So that's the, how the coalition got started. Here we are now just barely two months away from the, the vote on November 8th. And things are starting to pick up, uh, really pick up. We've now got a coalition of 31 members, member organizations from across the state. And if you happen to be part of an organization that you think might be interested, please consider joining the coalition. And I'll stop with that for now. And uh, maybe, and you might imagine that as the treasurer of the PAC, I will be talking to you later on. Okay, thanks. Here's Mike. Thank you, Janet. Thanks for coming today, everybody. And uh, we really appreciate you taking the time to be here to talk to us a little bit about this issue. My name is Mike Weirich, and I was actually later to the party than Janet. I think Amnesty International is a human rights organization, and it may, may have been less obvious to people that we should be part of this coalition, but Amnesty has a large section involved in ending gun violence. And so uh, once I did find out that the coalition uh, had existed, I, uh, you know, worked hard to become a part of it, and uh, I'm getting in more and more deeply as time goes by, as that uh, kind of thing happens in these deals. So, um, uh, again, just quickly about my part, my organization, Amnesty International, is a human rights organization. It's the largest human rights organization in the world. We do a lot of things uh, for, say, prisoners of conscience that have been jailed for their political beliefs. Uh, but there's chapters on death penalty, LGBTQ rights, uh, you know, gun safety, and a variety of things. It's a big tent. Basically, wherever people are, like little people, are being bullied by big, powerful people or governments, we are trying to be there to help them. And uh, then the end gun violence, I think uh, gun violence disproportionately affects poor and minority people. And so Amnesty thinks this is a really important issue uh, for us to be involved in for just the health and safety of people in general. And uh, that's why I'm here today. Hi, I'm Christine Lehman Engeldow, and I'm the Cedar Rapids lead for Moms Demand Action. For Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Um, we're a nonpartisan grassroots movement um, dedicated to try to stop the um, advocate for stronger laws and policies that will make uh, gun reduce gun violence and um, save lives. <laughs> so. Um, Yeah, that's about all I guess I need to say. But we are um, fighting this reckless gun amendment. And um, I'm on the board for for this organization as well. So, Do you yeah. want to start on your slides? OK, we're going to sit down for the. So on November 8th, vote no on the reckless gun amendment. And it has the website for Iowans for responsible gun laws.com, which has a lot of information um, about the organization. It has this slide presentation. If anybody wanted to present it to their group or a family member or anything to show um, why there's uh, links to donate and um, all kinds of information so look that up yes there's a lot of information about this uh this amendment uh on the iowans for responsible gun laws site and you would be well served to take a look at it if you want to learn more about it the proposed amendment language the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed the sovereign state of Iowa affirms and recognizes this right to be a fundamental individual right. Any and all restrictions to this right shall be subject to strict scrutiny. 
And it's those last two words of this that are the most important. Strict scrutiny is a legal term and it can take us a long time to get into it, but it what functionally what it's going to do is make it hard for any new gun laws to get traction and it may invalidate some of the current gun laws that are on the books. Okay, so it show, this shows it's not the same. So the wording of the US Second Amendment is a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Well, they dropped the well-regulated militia because so many people are, are um, in, you know, for the Iowa Constitution change, because so many people are trying to say that the gun should have been just for the militia and not just for everybody. So they're trying to um, strengthen their ability to have guns by now saying, uh, the proposed Iowa amendment says, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. The sovereign state of Iowa affirms and recognizes this right to be a fundamental individual right. Any and all restrictions to this right shall be subject to strict scrutiny. So this is just so you can compare the two um, things and see how they differ. The vote yes side will be trying to say that this is just second amendment for the Iowa constitution. And I think it's clear that it actually goes farther than that. So what is strict scrutiny? Strict scrutiny is the highest level of judicial scrutiny in the court system to decide whether a law is constitutional or unconstitutional. Inserting gun rights with strict scrutiny into the Constitution would tip the balance of power, elevating access to guns well above public health and safety. Only three states have similar wording in their constitutional amendments, Louisiana, Alabama, and Missouri, and they rank the third, fourth, and fifth highest in U.S. gun deaths, and I don't think we want to follow in their footsteps. So what do responsible gun owners think? Responsible gun owners and gun dealers oppose this reckless gun amendment because it would prohibit reasonable, responsible safety measures they support. Things like universal background checks, gun safety training, and requiring a license to carry a gun in public. So this one shows um, what do most Iowans think about responsible gun laws? 91% support banning carrying a firearm while under the influence of drugs and alcohol. And I would guess that the other 9% are on drugs and alcohol. 85% 80, support prohibiting felons from profess, possessing firearms. And, you know, maybe the other 15% are felons. I don't know for sure, but it would make sense. 85% support requiring background checks on all gun purchases. And I would think everybody would want that. So maybe the people that uh, can't pass the background check are not supporting it. 83% support requiring gun safety courses before the purchase of a handgun. Um, that just makes sense that you know how to use a gun if you're going to have it. And 72% support extreme risk protection laws that allow police or family members to request a judge temporarily remove guns from home from people who may be a danger to themselves or others. And the key to that is only the family members or the police have the right to ask for this. And so when they see a family member in crisis, they can report it to the police or to a judge. And it's just a temporary removal of guns until the person gets their life in order. So that is another really good gun law that really protects a lot of people from suicide or harming others. 
guns have become a public health crisis in America, as I think we all know. Uh, one American is shot every five minutes. One American dies by gunfire every 14 minutes. 323 Americans are shot and 104 die every day. And I think we're all hyper aware of Uvalde and all of it. It's like there seems like there's a mass shooting every day and only the mass shootings seem to get the attention of people anymore. Okay, a public health crisis. Impact of the gun violence in the US. It's the number one cause of death for children as of 2020. with others support iowans for responsible gun laws with your contribution and help us defeat the reckless gun amendment you can learn more about how to do this on our website iowans for responsible gun laws and i did want to mention that the version of this powerpoint on the site has an audio commentary to it so you wouldn't need somebody like us to do this uh, if you click that start on that powerpoint uh, one of the coalition members reads all the way through it and does a really nice job, probably better than us. <laughs> so here are the coalition partners. I won't read through all those, but it's a lot. Iowans for Responsible Gun Laws is a coalition of organizations and Iowans who believe in common sense gun laws and value public safety for all Iowans. Anyone can join the coalition and be part of the collaborative effort to defeat the reckless gun amendment. And then I'll just say, um, you know, there's a wide variety of organizations on here. Uh, there, are, uh, there are, we know, gun owners and hunters who are strongly against this amendment. There is a lot of law enforcement, including our police chief here in Cedar Rapids, who's against this amendment. And, uh, uh, you know, there's, uh, it, it's not just people that uh, are all about gun safety all the time. We're trying to teach the people that are more in the middle on this issue or maybe care about it less, that it's just not a good idea. It can tie our government's hands into the future. Now, I will say this, I know that Iowa is one of, I think only 17 states that doesn't have anything 
in their constitution about gun rights. But this goes too far. The language that they have put on this just simply goes too far. Strict scrutiny is too far. So. Well, you can find us at the website. We've already said Iowans for responsible gun laws .com. And then the Facebook page is Iowans for responsible gun laws. I think there might be spaces in between that. And then on Twitter at responsible Iowa. So um, again, we're going to ask you to vote no on this reckless gun amendment on November 8th. Okay, so um, I wanted to say this amendment will change Iowa's constitution so that it will be almost impossible to pass any sensible gun laws in the future in Iowa. It is trying to weaken gun safety regulations without telling people that that's what they're doing. We don't know, uh, we know people won't understand what strict scrutiny means. And um, the wording is in legal jar jargon on purpose to confuse voters. Our second amendment rights are already protected in the US Constitution. And my state Senator Kevin Kinney, a 28 year veteran of law enforcement said about this constitutional amendment, you're going to be diminishing our laws that are on the books. To me, this is going to make law enforcement more dangerous. <clears throat> also, I, I brought along this sheet. Um, this was from the United Methodists. Um, they sent, they've given out flyers at their church urging people to vote no. And um, I just thought it was really interesting that some of the things they said in here. Um, I'm not, I, I don't belong to a church, but um, you know, they had things like um, God's dream for humanity in Isaiah 2, 4 is that swords shall be beaten into pruning hooks, i.e. that weapons become farm Im implements. And, um, you know, it goes on to say, but, but what they're trying to say is that we are, we are called to live heaven on earth to put away weapons and live in peace. I thought that was really interesting. Thank you. And I'll just say why, partly why I'm up here. Uh, I am a gun owner. I'm a multiple gun owner. I'm a past hunter. More recently as an adult, I've been a target shooter. I've been a member of Isaac Walton within the last few years. And uh, so it's not like I'm an anti-gun person, but this just simply goes too far. And so, uh, you know, I'm up here to encourage people I, I guess, and again, I've taken my amnesty hat off a little bit. This is more of a personal thing, but it feels to me like um, we'd be all better off if guns were regulated more like cars are regulated. You know, the other side is happy to say, uh, you know, guns don't kill people, people kill people. Well, that's true with cars too. Cars don't kill people. You know, people don't kill, the. you know, it's not the cars. And yet at the same time, you have to have a license to own a car. You have to have insurance on the car. You have to have a, you have to be sure that you've learned to drive it correctly. And uh, it just feels to me like, if anything, we need more and stronger gun safety laws. And this amendment would tie people's hands for being able to do that and have those be effective. So on that note, that's that's my little personal bit. And then I'm going to turn this back over to Janet to say a few things here at the end. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I subscribe to everything you've, you've all said. Um, I'll talk just for a minute about Iowans for Gun Safety, of which I'm a member and I've been serving as the legislative chair. Uh, it formed as a 501c3 in 2010. Um, at the, at the beginning of what I consider to be a, a long and steady slide in uh, protective gun legislation that's been going on in this state, at, at least since then. Um, uh, it's moved around in terms of where the leadership was and where most people were, but it is now, it is a statewide organization. Uh, and uh, it has board members from all over the state. Um, so I encourage you to take a look at Iowans for Gun Safety as well. 
and, and see if you'd be interested in joining. I'm excited to say that this organization, Iowa for Gun Safety, has uh, uh, is, is administering a challenge grant uh, to coalition uh, members, organizations uh, that are members of the coalition. Uh, and Iowans for Gun Safety will match dollar for dollar every dollar that, that these coalition organizations contribute up to $10,000. So um, if you're a member of an organization that's not already a member of the coalition, uh, now is the time because we're only two months, two months away from election and we've got lots of things we'd like to do. Yard signs, heightened social media, um, you know, people to people campaigns um, and so forth. And that takes money. Uh, as you know, I, we don't know if we'll have enough to do big spreads with traditional media, but certainly uh, think about writing a letter to an editor, think about postcards, you know, think about just talking informally with people about this. We, we really need to get the word out. Um, and I would just say, why am I interested? I've, I've, been, I've been wandering around for years uh, wondering, what to do, what to do about this uh, gun violence thing and feeling very uh, incapable of, of having any real impact. You might know that uh, Grinnell is the home of Brownells. And uh, you might know that Pete Brownell uh, was not long ago the president of the NRA. So I had the opportunity to think about this issue quite hard and uh, joined a group of people who in our, um, we did a sort of an extended uh, uh, series of activities uh, honoring the victims of the Sandy Hook killing a few years ago. And um, part of that was to march out to Brownells, which is outside of town and stand peacefully uh, there to protest uh, uh, that gigantic business uh, being in our community. So now comes the, the part where I told you I'd be, I'll be back. Uh, I'm the treasurer of this organization, which means I take the checks. And what's really cool is you're here today, I'm today, you don't even have to mail it. You know, <laughs> It's a real advantage. You save like, what is it, 38 cents or something? Oh, oh, more like, than that, I who knows? Like $5 or something. <laughs> right. Anyway, if you haven't already contributed, and I know that many of you have, and thank you for that. If you haven't contributed, or if you feel moved to cr contribute some more, if you'd make your check out to Iowans for Responsible Gun Safety. No, nope. gun, laws. gun laws. Gun laws, sorry, I was back on the other organization. Iowans for Responsible Gun Laws. Uh, not to me, but to Iowans for Responsible Gun Laws, and put it in my little hand. I'll put it in the bank tomorrow. And thank you very much. I've got, I've got one more thing I'd like to say before we take some questions. Um, in my day job, what I do is I work in advertising and I mostly do advertising in the Cedar Rapids TV market. But uh, as we started doing some planning on our communications committee for this, for how to get the word out, uh, let me just say it's amazing how much it costs to get a message out across the entire state. It's a big state. And so if you can help, that would be great. We're going to do as many uh, cheap and free things as we can, like holding press conferences with law enforcement, holding press conferences with gun owners and hunters, all of whom are against this amendment, doing a press conference with victims of gun violence. We're gonna be out on social media and asking all of our friends to spread the word about this. Again, that's free. But as soon as we turn to things like text messaging, which the other side is already doing, or if we need to mail postcards, even if we're targeted, these things on a statewide basis are very expensive. And so if you are against this amendment and you're able to help, we would really appreciate it. Okay, lastly, I wanted to announce that Moms Demand Action Cedar Rapids just had a fundraiser and book sale and we raised $1,250, and we're donating that to Donna's Very good, Christine. And now if people have questions. So it is our habit. Um, it, 
it is our habit, if you would um, raise your hand, I will bring the microphone to you. And don't just shout out because the folks online won't be able to hear you, so I have to bring the microphone to you. But first, is this cup belong to somebody? Ah. Thank I'm you. not sure the mic is working. Is that better? Okay. I don't have a question, I just have a suggestion. I think people might be looking for the reckless gun amendment on the ballot, and it's not going to be called that. <laughs> I think that somewhere it should, I'm, I understand calling it the reckless gun amendment, it is, but it should say public. Public what, measure yes, one. Yes. Public measure one. You are correct, but I'll tell you, when we put this slideshow together, that hadn't been decided yet. So yeah. we should get that on. That's yeah, we'll get it on the slideshow. You're Our absolutely right. Say it. Um, say it again, public. public measure, measure one. one. And you're absolutely right. So on the ballot, it will say, so this is all dictated by the Secretary of State. On the ballot, it will say public measure one. It will have a, a synopsis of the amendment. But either on the ballot or in your voting booth, if you're voting in person, it will also have the, the language of the amendment. Um, and, but look for that public measure one, absolutely. And our yard signs have that on that, on say public, vote no, public measure one. But you're absolutely right, we need to update this. Thank we you. might just note too that the, the question is on the back side of the ballot. So turn over the ballot, <laughs> that's like a big one. Vote no on public measure one. I was just reading that in order to get a hunting license in Iowa, you have to pass a safety course which doesn't seem to jive with this. I mean, you can you can get a gun to shoot a person, but if you want to shoot an animal, you need to pass a safety class. Does that make sense to anybody? If you were born after 1972, you have to pass a safety class. I did not know that. Akani, do you know anything about that? I know, I know that they took safety training away for handguns. I don't know the answer for, for hunting, um, but in the, I should be in front of the camera. There've been um, a couple of different omnibus gun bills um, over the last couple of legislative sessions. Um, part of my job working for Interfaith Alliance of Iowa is to lobby and we walk lobby on gun laws. Um, and in one of the omnibus bills, they took away the requirement for safety training with handguns. Um, I don't know the answer on hunting, so we will look into that and, and look at what the current law is and make sure that that's accurate. So I'm going to go back to Hi, guys. Thank you. Is there uh, two questions? Too loud? Not loud no, you're not. Uh, a lot. Um, where do I get a yard sign? And is there a postcard campaign? I, I have a yard sign for you. Use the microphone. Oh. oh, I have a yard sign for you, and I know we can get more. I've, I've ordered 10 for our group, and um, then Online, we've got more in that. Cedar Rapids. So. As far as the postcards, we're hoping to raise enough money to do postcards to uh, people. But if you're talking about in, like a thing set up for individuals to send cards out to friends, I think that would be a great idea. But I don't think that we're organized for that yet. So talk to me afterwards and maybe we can get organized, Joanne. Thank you. We're going to have to use this microphone for both because that is not working in the room. How does this amendment tie the hands of judges? You want me to do that? Yeah, so what it does, it, it does tie the hands of judges because it dictates constitutionally that if a law is challenged in court, so um, if, for example, Iowa were to ever have an extreme risk protection order law, um, which is some people call red flag laws, right? And so if the legislature ever passed that law, because Iowa doesn't have that currently, um, then somebody could challenge that in um, court and, and um, challenge their constitutional right to be able to have a gun. So that would go through the courts. The courts would be mandated constitutionally to look at the law through the lens of strict scrutiny. There are three levels of judicial review. It is the highest, strictest 
um, level of being able to take away somebody's um, constitutional civil rights. And so um, we've had um, a couple of different law professors, one from Drake and one from the University of Iowa that are constitutional law professors, scholars, who have said it would be very hard to keep laws on the book if they were challenged in court using strict scrutiny um, because it would be taking away constitutionally taking people's rights away well for us the problem is you're putting you're elevating the rights of having a gun the so-called rights of having a gun over public safety and that's our concern so it could really strip current law um, and it also would put in danger any kind of future law should the legislature be inclined to to pass something like that. Does that help? Um, yeah, so those those states that the panel mentioned, Missouri, Alabama, Louisiana, um, they are third, fourth, and fifth in death, in death rates. So. If I'm correct, I believe one way to look at it that would uh, answer that question also is it puts gun the right to own a gun and carry a gun on the same level of protection as the protection against discrimination regarding race, disability, religious freedom. It puts the right to have a gun in that same category. So the strict scrutiny that is applied to laws that discriminate against any person in society would be applied to gun laws as if owning a gun is the same as the involuntary aspect of race, religion, disability, LGBTQ, you know, it puts a voluntary thing on the same level as your humanity and who you actually are born as. So I think that's kind of what the strict scrutiny does. I would actually argue that um, it actually elevates it beyond that above that because you don't have those written constitutionally as um, being protected at that same level of strict scrutiny so it actually puts it even above what you're what you're describing um, which is a very scary idea no, no. what are they scrutinizing i mean are they deciding if it's discriminatory to gun owners I mean, I understand that you say, you know, strict scrutiny is the highest level of scrutiny, but what are they basing it on and comparing it against? I think everybody think that's, that I've talked to thinks that's really unclear and don't, don't understand what that means. It's a legal term um, and it's a very wonky legal term. So um, have a conversation with a lawyer um, and, and see if, if that can help you. But it is, it is a it is a legal term that they are putting into the Constitution. And it, as I said, there are three levels of judicial review. Those are all legal terms of how a court has to look at something. And it is the highest level of review of whether or not the government can take away somebody's rights. It is a matter of whether the government, so the government when it makes laws are putting into putting restrictions and does the government have the right to restrict your right to have a gun and use a gun? So when they look at the, when they would look at a law, if a law were challenged by someone, and they look at a law, does the government have the right to restrict your having a gun, using a gun? So that it's how the court would be mandated to look at that law should it be challenged in court. Does that help? So I just wanted to add that I've read that uh, in Missouri after they passed this law that criminals that had already been on the books and been convicted of a crime went back to court, a uh, felony, sorry, convicted of a felony went back to court, and this, this was about guns, um, 
they went back to court and said, and retried it after they had the strict scrutiny on the books. And they had to look at the same case under strict scrutiny. And a lot of times they would get off and they can also go back and ch challenge laws like background checks and say, this takes away my right, my right. And this strict scrutiny I've heard is even a higher level than what the Supreme Court looks at a case. So. And I'll just say, uh, we could explain a little bit more about strict scrutiny. Like we've had these two legal scholars uh, talk to us about it. And uh, you know, this guy, the University of Iowa guy basically just said, if I was giving this presentation to a pro a vote yes on this amendment group, they'd get the exact same presentation. So he was just telling us the lay of the land. And there's these three levels of judicial review. Almost all laws go by the middle level. And then this elevates that up to the strictest possible level so that it's hard. But I'm just going to tell you in talking to your neighbors and friends about this, and you can probably tell even for us, it's wonky and complicated and hard to explain. And the more you talk about strict scrutiny itself, the less, the more confused people are likely to get. It's, I know it seems bad, but, and it sounds good. The problem is it sounds good, like strict scrutiny. That sounds like a thing we ought to have, doesn't it? And yet it's not a thing we should have. And so, yeah, it's, uh, so uh, hence the other side will likely call this the strict scrutiny amendment, and we are calling it the reckless gun amendment. So the point being, Talk about the impact. Should this pass, talk about the impact of laws being stripped from the books. Um, and that is really the getting into the walkiness of strict scrutiny. Like people want to understand that. I, we get that. Like we, we want to understand it. But really talk about the impact of taking away laws off the books that are about public safety and public health um, and what happens when we don't have those laws um, in our state. I think there was a question over here. Are there questions online, Kristen? Okay. You're fine. You're fine. I I hear from the other side all the time, especially from politicians like Joni Ernst and people like that, that um, we don't want a law that is going to take away the rights of responsible gun owners. Well, every gun owner is a responsible gun owner until he isn't. I mean, in the recent mass shootings, they didn't have a criminal record. You know, they got the gun legally. They were responsible gun owners and they still killed children and innocent people. So, um, I just wish someone would call that out. You know, we're all responsible until that first time we're not responsible. And there's dire consequences for that. And, and there needs to be a gun law that stops it before someone has the chance to be irresponsible with a gun, um, with background checks and other age things. Yeah, age requirements. All kinds of things. I think that's a very good point, Sherry. And I wanted to add also about the people that shoot someone because they took their parking place or whatever. They weren't a problem before. They didn't go around shooting everybody until they did. So. That is a very good point. People break, and if they just happen to have a gun on them, you know, it's a more dire consequence than if they just punch somebody or whatever, you know. Um, so I, I've seen people carrying their gun in plain daylight, mowing their lawn, and I'm like, what are you afraid of? <laughs> and then uh, I'll just say, I, we could probably all agree, or many of us would agree, that gun laws could go farther. But right now, we've got one thing in front of us. And it's really like there's going to be a ton 
of gun owners and hunters and law enforcement and all kinds of people that might not agree with many other things that we might agree on that we need to vote no on this issue. And I think they will if we can educate them about it. So yes, and right now our mission is just to keep this from passing. That's really it. So don't don't take your focus off of that for the short run. I think I probably also have to promise to shut up after this, but um, I think another way of helping people with strict scrutiny is just to say it is confusing. It's a legal term. It sounds like plain English, but they put it in there because it sounds like logical plain English. But do understand it's a legal term that lay people don't understand. And that's the reason it's in there to elevate the issue for people who do understand what it means. Yeah, kind of the a couple of the key things to remember. It's not the Second Amendment. When you have conversations with your neighbors, with your friends, with people at your house of worship, and at your job, whatever that is, it's not the Second Amendment. It is, um, I like to say it's the um, it's the wannabe Second Amendment on steroids. Steroids. Um, it is. It is up here, far and above what the Second Amendment does. Um, so talk with them about that. Talk with them about the impact of what it would do about um, laws that could be in danger, which puts Iowans in danger. Um, and then direct them to Iowans for responsible gun laws um, for more information and to our website and Facebook page and all of that. We have two months to educate people, and so we need your help in doing that. In addition to the money that you're going to hand to Janet, or you can donate online also if you would like to do that. Um, and for those who are watching online, we would love your donations as well. Um, it's iowinsforresponsiblegunlaws.com. Um, we, we need your voice. We need your help in talking with folks about the impact of this and that it will put Iowans in further danger. Um, by challenging the gun laws that we still have on the books, which are few and far between, but any current or any future um, laws as well. Any closing comments that the three of you want to um, add? Okay, we do have yard signs. I have more in my car that I have to go get. I brought some in. Um, Jeremy, I have your stack, and Christine, I have your stack. I'm working on yours. Um, and so take a yard sign with, take one for your neighbor if you think that they um, would be interested in that or, or somebody else um, and plant them in your yard um, and talk with folks about this issue. Um, and I'm so grateful to have you all in the room. I'm so grateful to have you all on the live stream. Thank you. Um, this is Intersections. We will be back the first Friday of October with an entirely different subject. So we, um, we hope you will join us. And uh, we will be at First Presby back at First Presbyterian. Um, and you can, if you have trouble, I know some of you had trouble ordering your lunch online. If you have trouble, please do try and do it online because it makes it so much easier for us. But if you have trouble, just call our office and we'll help you through that as well. So thank you for being here and um, have a great weekend. Thank you, folks. <laughs>